Now, Natalie Pearl is making waves with her brand new cover of the Tamil and Man classic, Take Me to the King. Now, it's got a little bit of a reggae twist with it. And Natalie is no stranger to gospel music. She had her debut release uh, album. It is. It was entitled Unique Perspective in 2013. And she's never looked back. And she's joining me today. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Good afternoon. Hello. What a, it's been a long time. What a lovely smile that is. It's, it, that's the smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How's lockdown treating you at the moment? It is what it is. You know, I'm taking every day as it comes. I think the first couple of weeks was a bit weird because I was working from home and then the kids joined me and then it was just full on but I've been furloughed so um I'm enjoying it and I'm actually cooking up some food people are gonna have to be rolling me out of here uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh you better do some exercise girl you know what it's like <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> so um okay tell us about this track and how it came about um, okay, so I, I had taken a little break from gospel music, actually, I had taken a break from singing, all kinds of singing, um, and it's funny how um, God sends messages to you, so he'd been sending little messages telling me it's time to come back, um, I was like, okay, okay, uh, I'd never done a reggae track before, and uh, I was like, okay, God, if you're going to open this door, open a door, and send an opportunity my way to, to get me back singing again and literally it was about two days later I got a call from Gary Dixon and he uh, asked if I could be part of this uh, compilation EP it was at the time uh, and I was like okay and he said it's reggae and I was like ah, I haven't done reggae before it's not wasn't one of my favorite genres actually to be honest. Gary Dixon is a producer he, is he a manager? Yes. Gary Dixon. No, so he's he, he's uh, he's uh, he's like an all-in-one. We call him Neo because he doesn't stop working, um, mm -hmm. like from Matrix. But he he uh, produces. He's got the, he's the idea and the genius behind um, doing a lot of uh, covers and turning them into a lovers' rock. And he's uh, done an EP and um, and now an album as well with inspirational songs. Uh, he has a, a group called the TTM Collective which is a group of musicians that basically reproduce what the sound that he has in his head. He works alongside uh, Stuart at Chronicles 3, I believe that's the name of the studio. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Stuart Green and uh, Gary Dixon are the brainchilds behind everything from the project. So pulled me in and because I'd already said yes to God, I couldn't say no. <laughs> um, so I was quite taken aback um, that it was, it was reggae. But quite surprised actually so it worked really well um and that was my entrance back into the whole singing thing and that's how i got on board with the uh, with the album so what's the response been like uh of the single <laughs> it's been amazing so um i think because of the way the song st starts naturally uh people recognize the tune and they sing along um as i start singing it especially with the live events that i do um, and then when the bass line kicks in and the reggae kicks in, oh my gosh, I have to pull it up every time. <laughs> so it's been really good, it's a good response. Um, uh, yeah, it's just been amazing. So, I mean, it's such a great track. I mean, where do you see this track going? Who knows? Who knows? Do you know what? Um, I try not to anticipate where tracks are going. I try to be as organic as I can um, and just let the the vibe of the track, the feeling behind the track and everything that was there at the time of recording the track just come through. Um, so I let it speak for itself, basically. <laughs> I let it speak for itself. I mean, it's such a great track. I've seen you perform it so many times and you don't get past, I mean, it has to be played twice. To, you, I mean, you get used to it. <laughs> You know, you hear the intro and then, and then it's rewind, come again. Ah, yeah. Every so I really, I mean, we're going to play this track. In, in, it will be played on on the show. But um, you also had uh, your debut release, two thousand and thirteen. What happened with that? I know. Oh yeah, that was a while ago. 
yeah um so i had written some songs over this so my first debut ep was 2003 um and that was all the praise when i had four tracks on there and um since then i had gradually been writing different songs i had two babies two hit replacements and a whole heap of stuff in between um so i was writing a uh, lots of songs um lots of experience life experience in between um and came up with this 19 track album 2013. um i remember on the day it's like trying to get the um just trying to get the, the everything together for the two-day uh uh launch of the album and i remember actually panicking because that was the same weekend that miley music came over from the states and he completely sold out his event. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, am I gonna get anybody to come to my little, to my album launch? And we sold out the first night and the second night was really well attended as well. I remember you being there as well, helping us out. Um, it was such an amazing time. And uh, yeah, I just felt really honored to, to be able to do a project like that for people that appreciated my kind of music. So yeah, amazing. Another album in the pipeline. Oh, I'm always writing. I did take a break, like I said, um, but I'm back writing again. I think this lockdown has got me having itchy fingers. <laughs> so I am writing, um, hooking up again. I think I've been in talks with Paul Watson, a few other producers as well. Um, so hopefully um, I can get something out soon. But um, yeah, uh, writing again. It's no. good to be writing again, to be honest. If there was a particular person that you would love to sing with or have on your album, who would that be and why? <laughs> I'd have everybody that I know. <laughs> I'm so blessed to know so many amazing singers. I'm not going to answer with any one particular. I'm going to cop out on this one. But um, I just, I'm so blessed with so many singers that I know. Um, and I love the variety that we have, especially in this country as well. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to pick out some American artists. That'd be brilliant. And some, you know, some well-knowns, but there are some amazing people I have over here that have got some amazing talent. Um, and I just love the variety in our sound over here in the UK. Um, you've got somebody who's got really thick, soulful voices. You've got people who can do the, the acrobats vocally. You've got people who have got such a, 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 a tune that's as fine tone to their voice so it's it, we've got a whole scale and a whole range of different voices i'd love to work with everybody because i the way i write i write all kinds of genres as well so i'd love to write and collaborate with so many people just to kind of um take on board and, and bring out the tones and the sounds that everybody everybody else can offer as well so yeah i'd love to i'd love to do that and um I remember you being in a singing group back in the day. Can you remind us of that group? <laughs> Every time. Why do you always bring this up, Ibe? <laughs> People need to know. They need to know history. <laughs> it's true. Um, I was in a group called Committed. Uh, we started out as an a cappella group, a girl, five girls. Um, and then we gradually, we went down to three uh, and we started to, um, you know, singing around with the the full band, and yeah, there were some good times we committed. That was that was oh, what was that? When was that? Nineteen ninety. I want to say ninety five, ninety seven. Yeah, around the nineties, late nineties. Um, and I think that was around the time Sinai was around as well. All your hip hop heads were around. So Green Jade, uh, Solid Rock at the time. Oh, so the, the the gospel industry or market or whatever you want to call it, it had such a unique sound there. Everybody was so like unique and different. Um, I miss those days. You yeah. still connect with the girls? Still what, sorry? You connect with the girls from the group? Um, not so much. Uh, life has kind of like um, drawn us different paths. Got married, had kids. I think one of us uh, is running our own business, and just this life has just taken us different paths. I think I uh, want to say, out of all of us, I'm the one that's singing the most at the moment, but um, yeah, no, not much contact. So, what are you egging on for a reunion, Ibe? Are you suggesting one? The reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it takes more than one person to do a reunion, so um, we, we never know. You never know. So how can people connect with you and follow you? 
Okay, so any true followers will know I'm a Facebook girl. I do dabble in Instagram. Um, on Facebook, you can look for me under Natalie Pearl. Um, on Insta, I believe I'm Natty Pearl or Nat's Place, so N-A-T-Z and then Place. Um, I'm also on Twitter a little bit, um, but yeah, those, those are the main places that you can, Facebook is the main place that you can see me, basically. Natalie Pearl, you're a star. Always have been. Thank you for joining me. <laughs>